Thanks for having us here today. Howard, can you uh, just inform us and enlighten us on the, uh, the new initiatives this season that the referee is going to implement in the, uh, you know, through the leagues? There's a couple of uh, areas of focus this year. Um, which you'll have heard about and which obviously I've spoken about quite a lot in the, uh, in the last few days. They primarily sit around two areas. One is around participant behaviour and the way that we feel that all participants should behave on the field in the technical, uh, technical area, even in the stands as well, there's focus on, on fan behaviour. And then secondly is the focus on effective playing time, about how much time we get in the game, how we uh, calculate added time, how fairly we do that. And some of the changes are from within our game here in the English uh, professional uh, ecostructure, if you like, and all the way through the grassroots levels as well, working with the various stakeholders to try to improve the game for the, all the participants. And then secondly, um, the, the IFAB and, and FIFA are placing some responsibilities and some requirements on us and everybody around the world in terms of other areas, particularly around added time. And, um, and therefore, of course, we, we have to apply those. Just, just tell us about that, so the, the specifics of the uh, the time, but it's added time, but then there's also a new rule coming in for players who are injured and have to leave the pitch, is that right? Yeah, we, th we think there's two elements, Gary, in terms of playing time. One is about how we calculate the, uh, the time that's lost during the game and, and how many minutes we put on the board at the end of each half. And then also what we do within the game to try to ensure that the game restarts efficiently, that we minimise those moments when momentum is lost. And sometimes that's lost through nefarious means. You know, I think we accept that marginal gains are important, but also with that comes more dark arts as well. Um, so we're looking at a kind of double-pronged approach, really. One is adding time more consistently and accurately. And in line with what we saw in the World Cup in Qatar and what we're seeing at the moment in the Women's World Cup in Australia, FIFA have applied a methodology around a more scientific and consistent way of calculating lost time. Um, the feedback that they received was positive, they reported. They then provided information to the International FA Board. They make up the laws of the game every, uh, every year and, and tweak things where they think it's going to add benefit to the game. Within those changes, is responsible in now on the officials to calculate time more consistently, particularly around things like goals and substitutions. So we're going to do that. We think that there'll be an increase in the number of minutes that's shown on the board in our professional games. We think in the Premier League, for example, it might increase by on average about two and a half minutes. We don't think it's going to be hugely excessive. We think that things will settle down a little bit, but we think that maybe a couple more minutes Depends how many goals are in games, for example, how many incidents there are events in, in games. But but there will be slightly longer games, uh, but it'll be fairer. But, you, but the first the first weekend of the e EFL, there was we saw teams going sort of 10, 12 minutes getting added on. You're sort of wanting an extra two minutes. So let's say an, an average Premier League game or any game would be four, five minutes. So an extra couple of minutes doesn't seem that excessive. Why was it so excessive in the first weekend of the EFL? I, th I think. Um, we saw some some quite big numbers in some games, which made made some headlines. It was 13 at Sunderland. I wasn't at the game, so I don't know what actual incidents happened. Most been... games were t 9, 10, 11 minutes, weren't they? Yeah. In the league, two hours watching on Saturday. There was, only one, there was only one game, that one at Sunderland, where the number on the board was double figures. Everything else was less less than that. Um, so you know, we'll, we'll we'll have a look at how that went over over the weekend. But, but we're talking about specific incidents that, that result in that more scientific calculation of added time goals, substitutions, whereas previously we might have just gone for 30 seconds per goal, 30 seconds per sub. Uh, it wasn't being done in a way that was really consistent or fair or really accurate, and now we're saying it will be. Um, again, we, we, we looked at this quite closely last season. On, on average in the Premier League, there was eight and a half added minutes last season, which is more than any other top league in Europe. Um, we do anticipate it's going to go up to maybe about 11, something like that, if the same things happen this year that happened last year. But we're not going to go to crazy numbers. And, and part of the reason for that is that we're going to encourage, continue to encourage our officials to be proactive within the 90 minutes. So, for example, when there's a substitution, we're not going to just stand there and let the sub walk off slowly at snail pace. We're going to get there before the substitution board's even held up to the player that's coming off, encourage them to leave at the nearest point, get off the field quickly so that people are not hanging around waiting for the game to restart excessively. Well, Same with goal celebrations. So I think we'll, we'll see the numbers come down going forward for a few reasons. The referees will get, get better at doing that, will be consistent in exactly what we add time on for, and players will also recognise the nobody, need to get the game restarted. What, what num I mean, I was, I was really critical of teams uh, wasting time, and also when I was looking at the stats last season of, of, the, of the ball, time in play, I didn't think it was enough. I mean, I'm not sure what the average was, uh, 
53, 54 felt like it was, that's what it was most it games. It was 54 in the Premier League, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What number are you actually trying to get it to? What's like the number that you think, you can, with the added on time, we, we want to say, is it 60? Well, all, all games are obviously slightly different. It depends on the, the, uh, the dynamic of the two teams. So, for example, on, on Friday night at Sheffield Wednesday, Southampton, we saw 69 minutes. You know, if you saw the game, you saw Southampton, Southampton kept, kept the ball a lot and what have you. But I'm sure that some of the work that the officials did contributed to that as well. Bearing in mind that in League Two, it's dropped down to 48 on average last year. I mean, that's pretty low. And, and yeah. I know, Gary, you, know, you, you see a lot of League Two football. Um, I think you said previously you didn't feel like it was an irritant, the fact it was, it was no. a low number. But, but the feedback that, that, that the game gets suggest that some people do feel that way and sufficient n numbers of people feel that way for action to be needed to be taken to get more playing time you know so i don't know what the golden number is i think we just want to see a, a, a stop in yeah. the trend that sees year on year numbers going down in terms of effective match time and we believe these measures will help to do that i think the principle of what you're trying to do i think you know it can't be argued that it's the intention is there and it's right however i want to just read you out rafael varan's uh, comments who I think you know is a very measured player and he's saying here last week that the players are not being listened to what you know we have 100% on the pitch you know games are longer that you know games they want longer games more intensity when there's more games than ever when players are concerned about injuries and obviously the, the level of intensity in the game they don't feel like they're being listened to I think Pep Guardiola said something similar it hasn't been received well in the first week of its implementation are you already checking that and thinking we need to just pull it back a little bit I can guarantee that within the English game, I listen a lot, I consult a lot. The first thing I did when I came into this job back in December is reach out to every single Premier League club and numerous others in the Football League with an open invitation to go in and, and talk to head coaches, managers, CEOs, you know, players and say, look, give us, give us your feedback about all things officiating. And, and most clubs took us up on that offer, not all, but most clubs took us up on that Will offer. Will you adapt it, though, after the first week of the EFL feedback and the Charity Shield? <laughs> of course. I mean, we're here to serve the game, so we, you know, we listen to the game. Some of these things are, are mandated upon us by, by the International FA Board and FIFA in terms of the adding of specific amounts of time for specific events. And all we said to the officials is, when goals are scored, calculate that time accurately. When substitutions happen, when the game is dead for a sub, calculate that time accurately because that's dead time. That's not that's not a throw in. It's not but, a corner. But, but no so one, that's what we've told no, them to do. But no one feels cheated when the goal gets scored and a team celebrate for a minute and a half. No one expect that's part of the ninety minutes of a match. No one expects there to be, you know, time. And no one feels cheated at that point in terms of in the crowd or actually us on television. No one feels that that should be sort of if you like because if you got seven goals in a game, you could be talking about 20 minutes of added time or eight goals in a game, you could be talking about an enormous amount of time. No one, I think, feels that they want that. Are mm. you fixing a problem here that doesn't exist? Well, first and foremost, in terms of goals being scored, we'll do our part to try to ensure the game restarts as quickly as possible, while still allowing, obviously, people to celebrate, which is what the games are all about. But I, I actually do think people do feel a little bit cheated if they're seeing 48 minutes of match time in the two. I asked yesterday, I asked, uh, you were with me yesterday, there were 20 fans in a room, and only 20 fans, mm. but they watch every single, you know, they watch Premier League games, mm. one from every club, and I asked them how many of them felt cheated watching Premier League games when they left, and only four of them out of that 15 or 20 put their hands up. So I don't think, I don't think there is a huge issue where of fans feeling, yeah, they don't want to see time wasting. They want to see referees stamp down on deliberate, intentional time wasting at the end of a game where yeah. it's frustrating. They want to see that clamp down. Yeah. But you have the powers to deal with that. You have yellow cards and you also have the six second rule with the goalkeepers where you can hurry them up. The minute you said to a captain, mm. I'm going to book the next player who time wastes if you feel a team are at it, they would straight away stop doing it because you'd start booking handing yellow cards out. You have the deterrent already within the laws of the game. Why don't you just apply the laws? Yeah, we, we, we do. So just to put the at a time piece to, to bed for just for a moment. A lot of that is around what we're having to do, but based on changes to the laws of the game, what happened at the yeah. World Cup has been uh, now sort of like embedded within the laws and we don't have a lot of choice around that. From my side, I think the most important part that we play is around trying to ensure that those tactics that are meant to delay the yeah, game, we we delay all accept the those. restart, but kicking balls away when the team is ready no, to take a throw that. in. We accept so those. you'll see that, and I hope you've seen it already in the, in, the, uh, in the games over the weekend, you'll see that much more consistently and not just for this week or next week or September, October, right through this season and, and for good. You know, it's, it's on me to ensure that the officials and all of our management team to make sure that we're on the officials all the time to keep doing that and keep doing it, even if it's a second yellow card. If a player acts well, deliberately you, to do that's something... That's what I wanted to ask you because we we'll see, do it. We'll do we see a lot where players get yellow carded for time, which is normally a goalkeeper. You never see someone get... I'm not talking about a straight red, but you never see a second yellow come out for time wasting. If, you, if you're so strict on it, and Gary's talking about 
not the time actually use implement things that you can make big decisions on. Are you instructing officials that if someone is taking, wasting time again on a yellow card, you yeah. do give them a red? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, they, they have to, don't they? They, they? they have to be consistent. They have to recognise whether an action is clear and deliberate and does it have an impact. And if it does those things and is those things, then they have to take action. So if a player's on a yellow card, it goes out for a throw-in and the player kicks the ball down the line away from the location of the throw-in, that's a second yellow card. And, and we've shown no, examples of the officials. That, that, that will stop time-wasting you... more. <clears throat> that will stop time-wasting more than anything because we know as defenders or players, you don't want to let your teammates down and get sent off. Yeah. So a yellow card will definitely be a deterrent that will work if you want to really impact time keeping. No, but that's there now. Yeah, but, say, but, the referees now. Don't, but the referees don't apply it to the point whereby players are seeing it as a deterrent that they can still continue to time waste. If you handed yellow cards out more for it, it would stop straight away. We, we've managed things that should not have been manageable. We, we've turned a blind eye to certain things, maybe because a player's on a first yellow card and you think, oh, second yellow card's going to be controversial yeah. here. So yeah. if we're serious about modifying players' behaviours on these things, a, a player takes a choice to kick a ball away or to run 15 yards to stop a free kick from being taken quickly when they weren't there in the first place. That's a, that's a conscious choice by the player. If the player knows there's a consequence for doing that, the player won't do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they might still choose to late in the game, but they understand it comes at a price of a yellow card. We've got to obviously ensure that we do that consistently throughout the season and every season to change that behaviour. And, and those coached sort of behaviours that, that maybe you know uh, are occurring because of the way that kids are taught to play the game to stop free kicks from being taken quickly have to be have to change. Otherwise, you're going to end up you know suspended a lot of the time. I think, you'll I think you'll get this right in the next few months, but I think there'll be some sort of controversy along the way about added time and goals being scored in the 105th minute and stuff like that. But there's one rule that's being brought in which I, I, I completely disagree with, which seems to punish the player who's been fouled. So if a player gets fouled and he has to go off for a treatment, you're now saying he must go off for at least 30 seconds. That, to me, feels like most players are genuine and when they go down, they're hurt. I know we have this thing that football players go down too easily and then they go down. Most players... 90% of the time, I would mm. say, that go off for treatment mm. are injured and have got a problem they need some looking at. They then get an extra punishment of being on the sideline for 30, 30 seconds whilst their team are playing with... So I go off, I'm right back from Manchester United, I go off, I'm injured, I'm waiting there on the sideline for 30 seconds and the other team, Liverpool, go and score. I'm being punished because Carragher's fouled me, I'm off getting genuine treatment, I've got to stay off for 30 seconds. That is not going to go down well, that I don't think, with managers and players and fans. How has that rule come in? You're almost in some ways punishing the sort of 90% over the 10% that might be sort of, if you like, feigning injury and sort of doing it to delay. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, I mean, so for as long as I can remember, um, when a player goes down and asks for assistance from physio, doctor, whatever it might be, that player has to leave the field of play. You, you, we know that, really. You know that, of course. That, that's, that's existed for, forever. So Unless they've got the a bad injury the and they're treated <coughs> on the pitch and they go off and they walk off and then they want to come back on, yeah. they have to wait for 30 seconds. So, 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 but if I finish my point in terms of that. So, the reason that rule exists, because it might seem nonsensical, why is a player having to walk all the way off from a position that might be centrally located to then suddenly have to come straight back after one second of being on the sidelines? That rule uh, exists because treatment has never been allowed on the field of play. Assessment by the physio for the safe removal of the player so treatment can happen outside of the field and the game can start efficiently. The exceptions to that are when the tackle is a yellow card offence by the player that leaves the player injured or a red card offence, then the player that's injured can stay on the field, doesn't have to leave at all. If it's a penalty kick, the player can stay on to take the penalty as well. Or if two players from the same team collide, then the players can stay on the field. They don't have to leave the field. Of course, treatment can also take place when it's a serious in incident, a head injury, for example, or something that's more than just your routine sort of a, a, a claim for injury. So players are already having to leave the field of play. The team's already going down to 10 men. So, so we, what we're saying is we're going to give you... If, if The referee will ask the player, do you need assistance or not? The player will be given some opportunity to make an assessment. Do they need them or not? I know you think 90% of the time players are... are, are uh, injured when they asked for that. I think you maybe had a different view, Jamie, but but we know that it's not always the case that it's always necessarily a, you know, a need for assessment. Sometimes players will utilise that opportunity to slow momentum down. So what we're saying is, if you are saying you're injured, you can leave the field of play with assistance of a physio in a safe manner. For your welfare, you'll get time on the sidelines to get the treatment where it should always happen. That's on the sidelines. The game starts efficiently. And there's a built-in deterrent around people who look to use that. So you keep them off the pitch for 30 seconds, irrespective of whether they're, to whether they're ready to come back on or not. So I'll give you an example. Me and him go up for a header. 
I've got a little bit of blood coming out of my lip. You make me go off to change my shirt because I've basically got my lip, you know, just wipes because it's got blood on it. I'm off the side of the pitch, put my shirt on in five seconds. I've got to wait an extra 25 seconds to come back on because you've sent me off the pitch because I've got a little bit of blood on my shirt. And someone scores in that period, that is not right. Well, once you leave the field of play, you stay off for a period of time once the game restarts. 30 yeah. seconds. For, yeah, we're looking at about 30 seconds, we think is, is and we've, we've consulted the clubs on this. You know, it, it's not something that's just happened. We've discussed the issue around momentum loss. We've seen too many occasions where players just hit the deck, sit down, you know, um, ask the physio, the physio comes on, we stand there, we can say we're going to add it on. We don't know if players are injured or not. We're not going to take that chance. We're going to look after player welfare first and foremost every time. So when the player says they need the physio, even if we might doubt their the genuine need, we're going to say absolutely no problem. You come on, you, you yeah, assess the player. But traditionally, the player would then be looked at, treated, magic sponge, all that sort of thing would happen here. And then the player would trudge off the field okay. to come back on immediately but, but, one second after the game restarts. And we're seeing a lot of that sort of activity. So now we're saying, no, you'll get the treatment you want. We'll look after player welfare. You'll get the treatment on the sidelines where it should always take place. Otherwise, why are we asking them to leave anyway? And we've done that forever. And the game can restart more efficiently. And there's a built-in deterrent around that. So what you, okay, I'm probably, I'm, I'm coming from where Gary is, because I've always felt that was a problem when a team were defending a set piece. and. Um, and your players had a knock off someone and you're down to you know 10 men but what we're saying is basically if you do need treatment it's going to take you 30 seconds anyway and if you don't need treatment no, you don't need to go no, off the pitch no no you have if you if you need treatment off a of physio more than likely you need it where you are because you can't get up so how is that worth right. then no, how do you get you, them off you, the pitch you have you, ha you, you have that treatment on the pitch he's correct you know the physios worked on you the the, the dead leg that you just had other kicks subsided, you've walked off with a physio, yeah. you've had a little jog, you want to come back on, you yeah. can't for 30 seconds, even though you've been kicked. I've been kicked off you, I've got to wait for 30 seconds even though no, you've no. kicked me. That does. That, I feel there's big flaws with this and I think we're punishing the players who have been fouled versus the player who actually, to be fair, could be the aggressor who's now got 11 men on the pitch and they've got 10. Yeah. It, it, I really worry about this one. Well, of course, we'll see how it, how it goes. We'll see how many times players choose to stay on the field instead of asking for the physio. Some of the early indications from the you games I've seen over the weekend have suggested that when the referee spoke to the player, the player said, no, I'm OK, give me a moment. When I suspect they would have said, yes, let's get the physio on. The referee's given them a moment, they've got back up and the game's restarted but without would, any th this need to wait for 30, 40, 50 seconds, a minute. Then the walk off, then the player comes back on. No, but this feels like a genuine thing where you could add time on as a referee, because the referees are adding more time on this year anyway. If they think they're being had over by a player who's gone down and feigned yeah. injury, they could add two minutes on easily and they're within their power and they could punish them they that could. way by adding extra time on. Do you understand what I mean? But it's not that? just about numbers on the board, is it? Because I, I, we're with you guys. We don't want to see crazy numbers on the board. It's about momentum loss within the game. It's about the, the need to keep the momentum going. We, 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 like you guys, we watch a lot of football. We see when these things happen. I, I take your point fully, but we see a lot of times where teams that are under pressure, teams that are up against it, maybe even in the first 15 minutes or in the last 15, doesn't matter, but you'll see situations where players, maybe even when the bean foul will stay down, kill the momentum, take the sting out of the game, ask for the physio to come on. Now, it well, might be that they genuinely need it. If they do, we're going to get them the treatment they, that they need. It's always had to take place off no, the field. I mean, it, was, it was documented that Southampton, I think, a couple of years ago, used to have a tactic in a game, every game at a certain time, a player would go down, the physio would come on, and then the team would go and speak to the manager. You see that now. You see people with water coming out while the game's still in play before a player hits the deck. I'm not saying there aren't dark arts and there aren't these types of things going on, but you can actually look at that and think if it is happening, I'll add time on. However, when a player is genuinely injured and he gets treatment on the pitch and he's been fouled by an opposing player, he has to go off and even though he's ready to come back on at that point, he has to wait 30 seconds and play with 10 men. And if the goal scored in that, you're going to have all hell breaking loose. I'm really unhappy fan, I'm an happy coach, I'm an happy player. If I've been punished as the fouled player and my team have been punished for, through playing with 10 men, so I, that's my, my concern, is where you, the first goal goes in, where there's been a genuine injury, a genuine treatment mm. taking place on the pitch, the player's come off, he's waiting, all the fans are going, let him back on and you're all there. I think it's going to put enormous pressure on referees on the pitch when the player's there ready to come back on up particularly at home ground. Yeah, well, I mean, that exists already, doesn't it? The point you talked about, you know, if, if you go off and you're defending a set piece, you're not involved in that set piece at that moment. So that already exists within the laws of the game because treatment takes place off the field. So it's just a slight extension of that to make it consistent 
uh, and also to double it, double down on the deterrent effect, I think. So mm. that already exists. You can't defend that set piece if you've, if you've been uh, asked I've, for the physio. But, but, it, but you can stay on if it's a yellow card or red card. You get the treatment on the field and we're telling the referees to make sure you give time this, for that. Have we brought this 30 second thing in or has FIFA brought this in? No, it's something that's been consulted within the English game. So it's the English game that brought this 30 yep, second With the leagues I, as well. I, I, I personally think it's heavily flawed. We consulted with the, the leagues, the yeah. Football League, the Premier League, the National League. Um, they've said, yes, we think this is a good way forward based on feedback that they've had from their fans and, uh, uh, and the problem that we've got around momentum loss and around. And, and a lot of feedback I get from clubs is around that, around those dark arts that happen yeah. to mm. break the flow of the game, break the momentum of the game. But we do want player welfare to be front and centre. And we're saying, look, you're going to get all the time you need to be treated. Just off let, the field. Let, let's shift to behaviour in the technical area, because I, I, I tend to agree with you on this one. I thought during the World Cup in Qatar, it definitely went over the top where you had all these like 15 subs, mm. all the sort of bench, there's like 25 people standing up and sort of all coming towards the edge of a technical. That's not to celebrate a goal, by the way, which yeah, is yeah. fine. Yeah. It was more to actually challenge a decision or a, a moment in the game. So for me, is that something that, what is it that you've seen last year that you feel has gone sort of, if you like, against what you, know, you need to do something particular? So you're going to be basically booking coaches a lot earlier if, if, if technical areas aren't behaving. The intention is not to increase bookings, by the way. I mean, the intention is for no, everybody to buy into this and, yeah. and, and get on with their job, but really. The, that's but that's what's going to happen, we've seen, Yeah, I, I think it will initially. I mean, we've, we've seen over the last year particularly, but a trend that has absolutely gone in the wrong, wrong direction in terms of the numbers of people that are surrounding referees, the numbers of people that are getting sent out of the technical area, uh, the number of charges against, against uh, clubs uh, has gone through the roof in the last year or two, probably since, uh, since COVID as well. And it's a trend that's not only happening in the English game. I, I sit on a group of uh, heads of referees from Spain, Italy, Germany, France and UEFA, and everybody's saying the same thing. You know, even in the Champions League, we saw what happened in the Europa League final in Budapest, some pretty horrible scenes in the airport afterwards. And I think people are saying, look, this trend of kind of referee abuse almost yeah. that, that's happened. I, I started refereeing in 1989. It's probably been going downhill since that time, really. I mean, since, probably since I started refereeing. Maybe there's a reason I, why. But, but, I, I, would but I would disagree but it, with that. We need to stop that trend, I think. I would disagree with that in some ways because I think generally now behaviour on the pitch between players and referees is, is, is at its best level it's ever been. I think we, if you go back to when we played, you could hound referees a lot more. I think the difference now is social media and the actual sort of, if you like, impact of on-field behaviour on social media and then the sort of, if you like, abuse that then follows. I actually think player, referee, um, sort of, if you like, collaboration on the pitch seems to me better than it's ever been. Am I, am I missing? Because you say it's deteriorated from 1989 to today. I thought post the Andy Durso issue, yeah. you know, if you remember that famous that issue. 99, yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think post that, it, it, it was deemed that that wouldn't be acceptable and it actually grounding grounding referees wouldn't I don't think it's happened as I don't think it happens as much yeah I don't know what you think I, I agree with what you're saying but I also think the actual situation in terms of the technical area and managers or something yeah. like Arteta got um, yellow card very early in, in the community shield and again that felt like almost like a message not to just the Arsenal manager but managers up and down the country I, I think that's your biggest problem so Jürgen Klopp had a problem uh, with an official last season mm. and was dealt with as well is that where it's going to be a lot harder as well you think on managers and coaches yeah yeah I think so I, th I think if, if you choose to act in a certain way then there's, there's a consequence for that and again we don't think there's a need to show imaginary cards for example it's showing a disrespect to your, to your opponent so if that's a almost like a bright line rule, do that and you get a yellow card. As long as everybody knows that's going to be the consequence and there's no picking and choosing when that happens. Mm. You've got a commitment from us that we will be consistent regardless of who's involved, regardless of the game, whether it's Premier League or through the different leagues that we serve, we'll take consistent action on that. I think to your point about decline, I think it's been a little bit up and down, but mm. I think the, the feedback I get from the people who work in, in uh, grassroots football is that you know, there's a lot of problems there. The environment that sorry, referees I, face is I'm really about, bad. I'm talking about Premier League, sorry. I'm not talking about a yeah, grassroots no, level. I, I, no, I agree. But, but so often what's cited, whether you believe this or not, what's cited as the re one of the reasons for that type of experience that those officials face at grassroots levels is the Premier. power of example and, and what they see at the top level. And, you know, and then what we saw in, in Budapest, I think, you know, Fans feel empowered to do certain things because of things that are said after the game. So I think we've all got this responsibility. The game has come together, all stakeholders, the PFA, the LMA, the yeah. leagues, the FA, and, and said, look, you know, we need to do things a bit differently to protect the game because people are not getting involved in officiating. They're quitting really quickly. So the person in my chair in 10 years' time is going to have a, a smaller talent pool to choose from. We've, we've had these conversations before, and now is the time to stop the trend. It's happening all over the world uh, as well. Um, but as so often happens, it falls on the shoulders of the officials to... to, to 
to make that change happen by their actions within, within the game. I don't believe it's around standards of officiating. They can always be better. Our, our reason for existing is to try to make the officials the best they can possibly be. Feeding uh, back information from clubs and from the game at large to, to try to understand what, what, the, what people see as good quality officiating. And we're here to deliver that. That's our job. But it, this is happening all over the world. So, you know, if we're seeing a world that can't produce good officiating, if, we, if we're saying that's the reason why behaviours are going downhill, then it tells you that officiating in football is really difficult to do in a fully accepted way. So maybe it's just the behaviours and the reactions to officiating that needs to change. No, I, I, I'm embarrassed when I look back at some of the clips that I see of myself going, you know, always continually hounding referees back in there. I look back now and think, you know, what the hell were you doing? But just the reality of it is it's what happened and, you know, I don't look back upon it favourably. But... You have been very transparent and you've uh, been proactive since you came into this role, which I think has been welcomed by everybody. Is there a danger that too much is being put in too quickly and actually it might add more pressure on referees at the start of this season with these two or three new things that are coming? Cause I, I do think a couple of them will be quite unpopular with players. We've seen it already with managers, with coaches, which in turn then leads as power of example, as you say, to fans. Yeah. So is there a danger that we're actually being too proactive and actually it's, it's not broken, don't fix it? All the changes are meant to be for the good of the game, all of them. You know, and I appreciate that you know, when you change anything, it creates a reaction. I've also seen, conversely to, to the, uh, the, the, the thing you've read out there, and I, I fully respect that, uh, that opinion, I've also seen quite a lot of positivity in terms of some of the things that we're looking to do to increase effective playing time to get the game restarted, to penalise players who delay. All of these changes have been explained to, to, um, to, to, to the clubs as well. But I understand that it's not just about explaining the changes. You know, Creating the change in the first place through consultation is important and, and that process has been ongoing for a period of time and, and it's important that we continue because we want people to buy into this. We want people to see that this is for the benefit of the game. You know, we want people to see that what we're trying to do is for the benefit of all of us that love this game. Whether you know, you're blowing a whistle, you, you, you know, you're, you're playing, you're, you're watching in the stands, you're managing, you're broadcasting, whatever it might be. We want, we want to protect the, the good of the game for sure because you know, it's, um, it's something that we all cherish. Great. Well, let's hope that we have a fantastic season and we're not talking too much about referees. <laughs> that means <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's down to you guys. Thanks, All the best, Thank guys. You. Thank you.